And joining us now here on In the Circle is the legendary head coach at Northwestern, Kate Trohan, joining us now. Uh, coach, how you doing? I'm doing great, but uh, there's only one legendary coach at Northwestern, and that's Sharon Drysdale. <laughs> wow, it's very. I like that. We'll talk about her. Uh, talk about Coach Drysdale in a little bit. Uh, but first, obviously, how are you all doing? That's the most important thing. How's everybody doing after, obviously, what's been a unique year in 2020 with an abrupt shutdown of the season, not knowing what would happen. You do, you know, the fall, the way it turned out, the roster kind of being uniquely different with the extra year of eligibility. Just describe what 2020 has been like over at Northwestern. Well, it's been a unique year, that's for sure. A lot of, um, a lot of adjustments made this fall, a lot of unique challenges. Um, but our team has worked really hard. We've trained pretty much, we've been uninterrupted as far as our training. Um, very typical of a, of a fall season for us with the exception of playing outside competition. But um, I'm really pleased with the commitment that our team made to kind of make some sacrifices off the field so that we could get such great work done on the field. Do the players feel, was it a more of appreciation this fall than maybe past falls? Because sometimes in the fall it's like, yeah, well, you just got to do our work and do this. But because the game was kind of taken away back in March, was there like a more anticipation, more uh, excitement around everybody just to be back on the field in, in general? Yeah, I think for two reasons. Number one, they missed the game. And, and like you said, um, there was a renewed appreciation for each opportunity they had to play the game. So that was certainly, that certainly brought some extra energy. And the second piece was oftentimes this was their, their opportunity to socialize. You know, they weren't really doing much else. They were doing all their classes um, online. So this was their time to have a little fun. And I, that's the thing that I really like about this group. Um, there was a lot of joy on the field and there was a lot of great energy as we trained. So that, that made it easy for us to coach them. What did you learn about your team and what did you learn about you and your staff yourself here this fall because you had to be a little creative obviously you're not it's not a typical fall so there are some adjustments and I know I've talked to other coaches in the fall that said they actually learned some things about themselves during this that they might actually apply moving forward oh no doubt there are some things that we learned how to do um, either on zoom or remotely that we'll continue to use just just because it's so much more convenient and it gives them a little bit more time to focus on academics um, but that creativity had to start in March. You know, we needed to figure out a way to keep our team engaged, to support them, to help them make sense of what this new normal was. So that creativity started in March and our staff, um, our staff really stepped up. We did some, we did some unique things, especially uh, with the NCA allowing us to work with them so often over the summer. Um, Carol started this, um, es essentially she called it Drohan U and she broke down all of our offensive drills. She talked about the why behind what we do, what we, why we do it. Um, really used a lot of video, both from professional players, major league baseball players, and also our own players to talk through what our offensive philosophy was. And then we had a big graduation at the end. So things like that, that's just one example of, of the things that we never had time to really, to really dig that deep into. So moments like that have been great. Um, and then as we, as we transitioned into the fall, um, it was about really being creative and taking advantage of every minute we had together, without, whether that was small groups or then the days we did get to scrimmage. Um, we as coaches were challenged just to, to really get as much out of them as we could. With obviously, I mentioned obviously with the year that getting shut down, the NCAA, of course, added the extra year for the spring athletes. Uh, so as a result, everybody got an extra year, including seniors. How did that affect your program as you brought your team back here in the fall? Because you probably had some players coming back you weren't expecting, but you also have some new faces on your roster. For sure. That, um, that was something that we were excited for and grateful for the opportunity so that our seniors didn't, didn't leave the game um, w without really having – having to complete their senior year. So what we did is we sat down with each of our graduating seniors and talked about, okay, what's, what are they looking for academically? Does it make sense to come back and get a master's? How does their body feel? Um, you know, so there are a lot of components that we really talked about to look at the, look at the big picture to see what was best. Um, we had two of our four seniors return to play again. Um, and so, so bittersweet, right? We, we are two seniors who graduated and who, and who, uh, 
who moved on from the game, that, that was hard for them to say goodbye to the game on those terms. And we did our best to support them. Um, and then Morgan Newport and Emma Bartz were able to come back and they're getting their master degrees, their masters and um, they're playing. So they, they, they have a renewed excitement around the game as well. So tell us a little bit what you've learned about your team this fall. Obviously, uh, talk about some of the new faces that Northwestern fans will get to see and get to know uh, once you get back on the field here in 2021. We have two newcomers, uh, Lauren Boyd and Hannah Katie. And we learned pretty quickly two things. Number one, their maturity, their transition into college, having lost their senior season and then coming to college in a very different way than they had imagined, um, their maturity really carried them through. And they made the adjustment really quickly, both academically and on the field. So they, they have just really given us a great boost. Um, and then couple that with a really veteran team, not only in experience, but also in, um, in kind of the impact they've had on our program. So we were really fortunate to have, to have a really savvy team who really understood how we needed to pivot and get the most out of our fall. Of course, everybody knows about Danielle Williams and what she's done for your program and that tremendous feel freshman year. And of course, she was getting going in her sophomore season, a two-way player for you. What have you seen from her this fall and what has she kind of worked on in her game to take her to an either another level if that's possible? Well, Danielle Williams is a worker and every day she shows up at practice. That's, that's the attitude she's, she has is how can I get better today? Uh, she works very well with our pitching coach, Michelle Gascoigne, both lefties. And um, so, so she understands the subtleties of the game of, okay, how can I get a couple a, a, you know, a little bit better spin on my rise ball? What can I do to make my change up a little bit more deceptive? Um, coupled with um, the, a mental toughness and uh, a real joy around competing. She's been fun to work with this fall. She gets so much of the attention, but you also have pitchers behind her. So to the rest of the pitchers, how have they developed? Because I'm sure you want some of the other pitchers to step in and kind of help Danielle. You don't want to kind of wear her out, uh, you know, until, you know, you have to late in the season in certain games. But you also have a staff, especially in today's softball game. How has the rest of the staff looked and, and, and what can you expect from them and to, to kind of support Danielle? Well, I, I think when you talk about a staff, that's something that our team really embraces. And that starts again with Michelle Gascoigne. Um, and the way she has been able to challenge each of our pitchers to develop their best skill set and their unique qualities that they can bring to the staff, it's been outstanding. So you have someone like Morgan Newport, right, who's, who's back for her fifth year. Um, left-handed hitter, plays right field, but also has come in, has started some great games for us, has got some great save opportunities two years, three years ago through a, a no-hitter against Michigan State in the Big Ten tournament. So she adds a great dynamic and a, a versatility athletic, athletically as well. Then you look at Sid Suple, who was a freshman last year, you know, her first month of the season, we gave her starts against Washington and Florida. And she put us in a position to win both of those games. Um, we, we lost each by a run. But that just proves to me how ready she was for this level at first, you know, for this level right away in a month into her, into her career. Um, Lauren Borjak, who's a junior, she's really uh, been the pitcher this fall who has stepped up in a lot of different ways, both in how hard she's throwing, her command, her mentality. So she's been great as well. Uh, then you talk about Kenna Wilkie, who was a 20-game winner for us her freshman year, and, and she's been someone who we have relied on heavily as well. Had a great summer this year down um, playing summer ball down in Florida near you, so, so she really added a lot as well. Um, and then finally, Lauren Boyd. Um, Lauren Boyd is a freshman from Missouri. She came in, and again, really athletic, hits as well, plays corner position, but um, really a, a true competitor and has great poise for a freshman. What does it mean to have vers so much versatility as far as players that can hit, can pitch, can play different positions? Because that's always kind of – that's been part of your staple here a little bit here, that you've had versatility where you can move players around. You know, that's something that we made a very deliberate decision to start recruiting more athletic pitchers who could play other positions and impact the game in different ways, especially when we saw the game really changing in that you, you – Typically, you can't really ride one, one ace for the whole season, you know, and the offense has improved so much in the game over the last 10, 15 years that you've got to be able to show them different looks throughout the game. 
Um, so that's been definitely a staple of who we are at Northwestern. And uh, some of the pitchers in our program have, have been some of our best offensive threats as well. Who are the leaders on your offense uh, here that you look for for the guidance, not only on the field, but as well as off the field? You know, Rachel Lewis has a great approach and um, she's, she's just so intentional with the work that she does in the cages. And I think that sets the tone as well. Morgan Newport has been a great student of the game. And I think between the two of them, they've really mentored our younger hitters like Nikki Cochran, Jordan Rudd, uh, Maeve Nelson, who, who made such a tremendous impact their first year in our program. So I'd say there's a lot of great balance, um, a lot of good competition between our righties and our lefty power hitters in the batting cages. So it's, it's a lot of fun. How do you take 2020 and the disappointment of the you know, ending of the season, understanding why it happened and everything like that, but can you take those, that experience of playing in 2020? Can that help some of the players on your team here for 2021, getting that exp having that experience under their belt? Yes, and, and let me tell you a couple of reasons why. Um, in, when we started our 2020 season, we really uh, challenged our team with our strength of schedule. I mean, it, it, it was just one top 10 team after another. And coming off our super regional year in 2019, we felt like we really needed to take that next step to get us ready to get to Oklahoma City. And with that schedule, we had we had some really tough one run losses. I think we had five one run losses, um, of course, on the road, obviously, with us in Chicago. But what that did is it kind of gave us a little taste of, OK, we fell short. We, we, we were close, but we fell short. And um, and that really gave us a renewed sense of urgency when we came back together in the fall. And in a sense, it's a do over, you know, so so we're like, OK, our our freshmen, our five freshmen who started who had such a tremendous impact on our on our year in 2019. Now they come back as sophomores and they're dealing with the challenge of expectations of, you know, kind of that adjustment that every sophomore needs to go through. And we really challenged them coupled with that. And so I feel like their perspective now is one that's a lot more mature, has a better understanding of kind of how to control the game emotionally and mentally. So um, we've been really steady with our approach to the game. And that's, that's made me really excited relative to our maturity. Speaking with Northwestern head coach Kate Drohan here on In the Circle. Uh, this is what, your 20th season, I believe? Like, have you been there since 2002 – uh, leading the way as the head coach, you were an assistant before under Coach Dreisel. Just tell us a little bit, first of all, what got you interested in to play, you know, getting involved in the sport of softball, playing and then coaching? Well, um, you know, Carol is, is um, also on our staff, who's my identical twin sister, and she and I just love the game. We have two older brothers who were also very athletic, and our father coached us. Um, so it was kind of, it was what you did. It was what you did when you got up in the morning. And um whether it was basketball or field hockey, we just, we just really enjoyed the competition piece. Um, we had a great experience at Providence College playing. And I think both she and I thought like, hey, we don't, wanna, we don't wanna give up the game. We wanna keep playing. Um, Carol went to Hofstra and worked for Bill Edwards, one of our well, all time greats, Hall of Famer. And then I got a chance to work at Northwestern. So between the two of us, um, we were really fortunate to have tremendous mentors to really teach us, teach us how to coach the collegiate level. You mentioned Carol, obviously, your twin sister. Tell us, I mean, how are you two different? How are you the same? Why do you work well together as a coaching staff? What kind of, kind of the dynamic, which is so unique? You know, how we're the same, we love softball and we both love Northwestern. And, and pretty much that's where it ends. You know, there's, <laughs> we have, there's how, we, how we coach, how we teach, um, our strengths, our weaknesses, you know, you name it, across the board. Um, we're, we're different in almost every way. Um, but it's, it's been, we've, we feel very, very fortunate and very lucky to have been at Northwestern this long and be able to, to kind of go on this journey together. And I think having your sister by your side um, just is, is tremendous and, and everything just is a little bit more meaningful because we can do it together. What do you remember of the first time you were on the uh, Northwestern campus? Oh man, I came in in January when I, uh, when I came in for my, um, interview with with coach Drysdale um it was freezing it snowed the entire time um but I was in awe of first of all the campus on, on Lake Michigan is beautiful the access to Chicago um was something that was really exciting to me 
as a 23 year old. And then, and then when you think about um, just the opportunity to learn under Drysdale, it was awesome. So it, it, it was, I, I decided on the plane on the way home what I was going to do. I mean, that was, it was that easy of a decision for me to come to Chicago. That easy, that quick, boom. Yep. Like, yeah, that, that just sold you there uh, very much. You mentioned Sharon Drysdale. Uh, what made Coach Drysdale so great? Talk about what was it like working with Coach Drysdale. One of the greatest minds, you know, that I've ever met. And, and one of the uh, most generous women, women that I've ever been around. And by that, I mean, she really allowed me um, to explore my coaching voice while working with the team. You know, so she gave me a lot of responsibility, um, really trusted me to kind of try things out, fail a little bit, and then figure out what works a little bit better. Um, and then just to, just to be able to to become her friend and for her to mentor me, um, very, very impactful. And um, let alone kind of what she taught me on the softball field. She's just such a great mind. She wrote the rule book. She's um, so, her, her fingerprints are all over our college game right now. So really, really lucky to have her in my life. What was it like, take us through that process where you eventually take over her program. And how did that come about? Was it planned? Were you caught off guard? Where, did you ever think about being a head coach, I mean, what, what was that like going through that where, hey, you're following a, a legend here and taking over a legends program? Well, the neat thing about that is um, Drysdale stayed in the area and she continued to be really involved. In fact, we went to Hawaii that next year and she and her twin sister Karen came to on the trip with us. So she was at almost every home game. So, um, you know, I, I just felt, I felt like her support was incredible while we made that transition. Um, and anybody who's ever worn the uniform, I mean, Drysdale, Drysdale is, is Northwestern softball. And so for us to, to have gone through that tra transition together, that was really meaningful to me. Um, but again, really lucky to be at the right place at the right time and, um, and, and fortunate to, to have the confidence of the university for me to take over. How do you feel you've changed as a coach from when you took over in the 2002 and during that time to now in the present? Well, you know, you on the field, we've just the game has changed so much. And I feel like we've grown a lot in how we teach the game and how we train the game. And, and our best practices are just so advanced compared to 20 years ago. The technology that in, that's in our game, that's tremendous, right? But then for me as a person and as a coach, I think motherhood has changed me more than anything. You know, some say I've gotten a little soft, but that's debatable. Um, but, <laughs> you know, you, you, just have a, you just have a different, better, more well-rounded perspective. And, um, you know, my favorite thing about my job are the young women who I get to coach and the young women who have chosen Northwestern and to see how they've grown 10, 15, 20 years after they've graduated, that's what brings me joy in my job. And, and those are the moments that we're most proud of. Um, so it's been fun and, and we're looking forward to the future. It's a great school, great academics. Uh, it's unique in that perspective. You, you know, t tell us how that is like from a recruiting standpoint, a recruiting pitch, that this is one of the great schools out there. We've talked, you know, about the journalism school. It's well-known, but there's other things Northwestern offers. Uh, but yet, you know, at the same time, that means, you know, you don't just, not just anybody can get into Northwestern. So describe that perspective as you recruit nationally. You know, the, the, the most important thing about Northwestern and recruiting at Northwestern is really understanding who we are, right? And, and that academic piece will always be our number one priority. Right. And, and we never, ever waver on that. And we're really proud of Northwestern. So when we go out on the road recruiting or we invite people in um, to experience it, we believe in it. And we believe in the leadership in our, on, our, on our campus, for President Shapiro, our athletic director and Dr. Jim Phillips. I mean, really, really great compass in terms of in terms of our leadership and how we do things day in and day out. So we like to we like to think about our program in terms of being in line with the values and the goals that are over on campus as well. So we're all working together. Um, and, and when you think about it, what we've done competitively in the Big Ten Conference across several sports, um, we're also really proud of the fact that we're serious about winning here as well. 
And so we feel like there are only a handful of, of universities across the country who can really offer both without compromising anything. Now, there are times where we've got to juggle that a little bit and we've got to, we've got to balance it out where, you know, we're in finals this week and it's all academics, you know, and then there might be other times where the World Series, it's all softball, you know, but it's, it's understanding that balance and really planning for it and respecting um, what the demand, what demands are placed on our student athletes um, and making sure that they have the time to fulfill their goals and their dreams in the classroom as well. You know, that time, during that time around that 05 through 08 range, that was such a critical time in the sport and a critical time for the Big Ten. And I think you and Michigan really did a lot for the sport because, you know, back then it was pretty much, you know, the perception was it was a West Coast sport. Pac-10 back then was dominating. They seemed to always be at the World Series. But obviously you and Michigan really, I thought, took the sport to the next level, showing that, hey, this could be a national sport. Just tell us what was it like during that period. You got to the Women's College World Series, played for the national title in 06 uh, against Arizona. But that you and Michigan, I thought, both in particular, and then Coach Blevins and what she did as well, uh, you all really set a, a big, big landmark moment for the, for the sport uh, and the Big Ten. You know, when I, when I, I think you're right about that, and I'm glad you included Iowa in there as well. But when you talk about, you know, me being a young coach, I look to Hutch and Gail as, you know, I was in awe of them, you know, and, and I studied them so closely and how they were winning in the Big Ten Conference. And I think you're right. I think it really opened up the door for a lot of people to think, hey, why not us? Um, and I think the rivalry that we had among those schools really made each of us better. And it really pushed us to, to excel on the national stage. So um, a really neat time for the conference. And then right after that, you just saw the conference explode in terms of the investment with facilities and, and, and just the overall investment of the sport across the country. Um, when people understand how much they really love watching our sport on TV, it was, it was great. You mentioned that. I mean, it was a super competitive Michigan Northwestern, Iowa Northwestern. I mean, Coach Blevins, Coach Hutch, you know, speak for themselves, their careers. You're, you're right there in the middle of it competing for it. And yet, I would imagine behind the scenes, there was also a bit of a support there because you're helping each other kind of raise your game and raise the, the, the profile of the league and your programs and competing against the Pac-12s and other leagues. No doubt. And, and you know, that's that's what – that's what really was my biggest draw to the Big Ten Conference was that true camaraderie among the coaches and that support, um, the, the real drive for, for Title IX and gender equity and how the Big Ten led the, led the way with that. But um, still to this day, the support that, that we provide each other and that we lean on for each other is something that I think is really unique to our conference and one that's had a really tremendous impact on me as I was kind of just a, a kid in the conference trying to figure things out. What was it like facing Coach Hutch in the other side of the dugout and a Coach Blevins? You got Hall of Famers, and now here we are 20 years later, and the, the roles have reversed. Now people are like, oh, there's Coach Drohan, and, and they, now it's people are like the coaches that are coming into the Big Ten, the new faces, uh, as, as you and, and Coach Hutch still around. You Now you're all kind of leading, and Coach Ravel, who's now part of the Big Ten at Nebraska, now you're kind of the, the faces of the league and showing the new coaches kind of the how things work and things like that. Well, I appreciate you saying that, but I don't know if I'll ever put myself in their category. Um, just really, really tremendous what, what they've done. And then, and then the success that they've been able to sustain as well. I think that's, that's, that's a different kind of challenge. And that's something that I, I am now in awe of. Okay, how, how, can you, how can you deliver that year in and year out? Um, but, you know, it's, it's about making yourself available and, and moving the sport, sport forward, and especially with the unique challenges that we have in the Big Ten. Um, but I think it's worth it. I think to be able to, to provide the kind of academic opportunity that we do in the, in the culture and the community that we have, I think it's well worth it. You've had so many great players. We won't be able to get into all of them, but I, I want to highlight a couple. One is Tammy Williams, who I've watched forever in the NPF and play professionally at the highest level, win pro championships, obviously playing over for you. What, what made her so successful and such a great player that she, that, that she was? Well, I'll share with you um, the recruiting story of Tammy Williams, and then that, that kind of tells you everything you need to know. Um, we, we had just um, realized, well, we had, we had a player who was an All-American shortstop for us, and um, she decided that she, don't, she couldn't play the game anymore. She had too many injuries or just a number, of, a number of things that kind of went together, and she's like, I've got to retire from the sport. So we learned this in July. 
and I stumble on Tammy Williams at the end of August, right before school's about to start. I watch her play two games. I never saw her get a hit. She grounded out and, and ran really hard through first base. I thought her timing was awesome. She was playing third base and she was diving into the dugout to get ground ball, foul ground balls. I was like, this kid just loves to play. This kid has one speed and she, her, her team loves her and she's one of the most competitive people I've ever seen. And I learned that in two games. So we immediately invited her up to campus and we learned pretty quickly that, that um, you know, the, the intensity and the courage that she shows on the field she has that same strength off the field as well. And she came in having never played shortstop before. And we're like, hey, we need you to play shortstop. We think you're pretty athletic. And um, she turns into a, a four-time All-American for us at, at shortstop and then goes on to have a great career um, internationally in the MPF after she graduates with us and continues to keep getting better, which was no surprise. Um, and now the neat thing about it is she's turned into a great friend. So that's where I'm really fortunate to, to um, you know, to have people like that come into my life and, and really stay in our life. And, and as, as those relationships change, as those relationships change, it's pretty cool. It's a good person to also have talk to your team from time to time. Yeah, I'll kind yep. of know, right? It's, it's always great to have the alums back to around to show the, the, the current gr group what it, what it should take and, and what Northwestern softball is, just like you've had other great players. I mean, uh, Garland Cooper, who I, I thought was significant because she was, after playing, she was on TV when really the coverage of the sport started to explode. And she was kind of in the middle of that, showing off the Northwestern degree, paying off there from a journalism standpoint. Yeah, she, um, you know, she, she represents our program so well in so many ways. And, and I think really credit Garland Cooper with the success that Tammy Williams had, because she was her mentor as, as she came into the program as well. But, and Garland Cooper, uh, she was my daughter's softball coach this summer. Um, Garland Cooper and Eileen Canny were, were my daughter's two coaches. So it's, it's that kind of thing that comes full circle that's, that's so meaningful to all of us. You mentioned Eileen Canny. Obviously, you can't talk Northwestern softball without mentioning her, so she'll be the last one I mentioned. And apologize to everybody else I did not mention. Uh, but you know, we, 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 we have, coach has got to get going here. Uh, what, what, did she, what, what made her so special, Coach uh, uh, Canny there, that really uh, is one of the greats ever to wear your uniform? Um, fiercely, fiercely driven and competitive on the field just incredible and you can see that now even in the shots of her on the field and then when you got her off the field one of the kindest women to have ever worn the uniform and she was able to lead our team from the mound in a way that continued to push us to never be satisfied and i think because of that competitive drive which was matched by her work ethic um th there was just a real attitude between Leany and um, Courtney Foster, who was another pitcher at, at the time, you know, the two of them pretty much carried the load for yep. us. The camaraderie between them, um, their, how they celebrated each other, how they worked together and how they complimented each other was, was really a special time for our pitching staff, for sure. And that's so important even today that the pitchers get, you know, have that bond that they kind of support each other because there sometimes egos could get in the way and you've got your pitching coach, Michelle Gascoigne, who's turned into one of the best pitching coaches in the country. You mentioned her earlier. She knows that very well from her playing days at Oklahoma, sharing with Kalani Ricketts and getting the ball in game two. So that has to really, was that part of the, the salient there when you got, when you brought in coach Gascoigne is that she's been through it. She's pitched in big games, but she's also knows what it takes for the staff to work from a chemistry standpoint. You know, it's, it's one thing to be, uh, to be like the number one really talented pitcher, but Michelle's from Michelle's perspective. And, and I really learned this after we got to work with her on a daily basis. Michelle was on staff with Kehlani, right? Both superstars. I mean, incredible talent, right? And Michelle had to work to figure out a way for her to make an impact on that team with Kehlani as, as I think the, the number one at the time. Then she comes into the NPF and now she's got to sort of reinvent herself again to kind of say, okay, this is how I'm going to, this is how I'm going to win ball games at the NPF again, steps up her game even more and leads the bandits to multiple championships. And so when you have someone with that kind of talent, but also the awareness of the game and really understands her own craft, that's where I've seen her get all of our pitchers, get the most out of all of our pitchers. So I think she's a real gem. I think she's a star in our game right now. And I think we're really lucky to have her on campus. 
couple last things. Obviously, Northwestern, the, the, the alumni, you mentioned it, uh, is, is through the roof, especially through the media side. I mean, Michael Wilbon, who's on part of the interruption, wears Northwestern gear. He's the only person I see who supports Northwestern gear, whether it's softball or lacrosse, uh, you name it, every sport. Um, I know you go – Coach Fitzgerald has seen that with his football program. As they, you know, Coach Collins, we saw that when basketball made the NCAA tournament, the huge support from the media. I mean, I mean the list goes on and on. What is that like? to have that alumni support uh, so huge, but especially from the media side where there's so much media to have that pride to wear those colors. It's so meaningful to our student athletes and to, and to us as coaches. Um, I'll never forget, we're, we're getting ready to play Alabama in our opening game of the World Series in 06. And we're at our pregame meal and PTI comes on and Wilbon has a Northwestern softball yep. jersey. In. Yep. While we're eating, and, and we surprised our team with it, he was giddy about it. And just to have that kind of just, just support and, and, and hey, we're rooting for you. And um, it's a tight-knit group. It's a tight-knit group with all of our alums. And so uh, it's, that support is, is incredible for us. That's right. Did you even know he was going to do that when he did that uh, on the show there uh, at that time? Because now it's people kind of see it. They know it's coming. But by, back then, they didn't know that as well. That's when he really started, like, kind of pushing it really hard there. Yeah, we, we knew, but our student athletes didn't. But um, <laughs> it was it was fun. And, it, and you know, of course, that time of year in Oklahoma City, you've got a tornado delay every, yeah. you know, every other day. So they were they were going back and forth between PTI and the spelling bee, and uh, we were just we were just kind of waiting, eating, waiting for the, the all clear to get to the stadium. So it was a fun day. That's wild. Uh, yes, the tornado warnings at Oklahoma City, a tradition unlike any other. There. Um, last thing before we let you go, what's going to be the keys? Obviously, there's uncertainty about what the 2021 season will look like and the scheduling and all that. That'll be figured out eventually. What you can control with your team can control. What are going to be some of the keys for you to accomplish your goals uh, internally there for the 2021 season once you do get step on the field? Well, you know, it's, it's going to be about being ready, being ready when, you're, when your name is called, you know. And um, we have a really deep team this year, and I love the way they're supporting each other. But it's, it's going to be about the team that really understands the challenges, um, kind of the new normal of what competition will look like. We're seeing football and basketball kind of working through that right now. Um, but it's about that, that kind of adaptability and, um, and just – Having that kind of resiliency, just, you know, oh, I get to play today. All right, let's go. I'm ready. And, and that's going to be the difference for us, I think. Yeah, I was going to say, are you all taking notes? You're kind of seeing what's going on with football and basketball and kind of in the back of your mind, you're like, okay, so if this happens, this is how we have to handle this or that type of deal. Sure. I mean, we're all watching the sports world in general very closely right now. Um, with a, hopefully a, a little bit of optimism that things might be improved in three or four months. But, yeah. um, you know, you've, you've got to be ready with plan A, plan B, plan C. And, um, you know, we just, again, our, our leaders on campus have done such a great job putting the, the, the safety and, and wellness of our student athletes, number one. And, and we'll just follow their lead and, and take whatever opportunity we can get. Well, we, uh, we're hoping, and, and, and great words there. We hope that things are definitely get better across the board, but hopefully we see all everybody on the field and safe and as, as possible and ex get bring back the exciting sport that we miss so much, Coach. Uh, it's been an honor to have you on. Uh, we've certainly been a fans of you from afar. Uh, you know you got many of fans here, even in the state of Florida and in, throughout the country. So uh, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Good luck uh, the, moving forward, and we'll uh, definitely do this again down the road. Thanks, Eric. Take care.